wonders of the world So many wonders to behold So many questions in my mind So many questions, so little time Answers don't so easily come Unless you know to ask someone Who is a master of the trade Ask them how clouds get their shape Welcome to What the Heck is That with David Shiventura Hello everyone and welcome back We have a brand new episode this week I bet you are wondering why I have all of this beautiful art behind me. All of this was made by my next guest. Her name is Wendy Walkman, and not only is she a talent artist, but she is a lifelong friend. She is quite experienced in her journeys and she has dedicated her skills to hearing and learning with art. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Randy Wolfman to the show. Hi, David. Thank you for having me on. Um, thank you. First off, tell our watchers what kind of artist are you? Well, let's see. Um, there's a lot lots of different kinds of art. The kind of artist I am is a multi multimedia artist, meaning that I like a lot of different art media, like silk painting, which you see in the background, weaving, mosaics, fused glass. But most of all, I like to approach my art with the idea of just creating. I love color, I love shapes, I don't want to follow patterns or recipes or directions. I don't follow directions well. Wow, that reminds me of my experience as a musician. We both create without the wounds. Yeah. How old were you when you started making art? Well, that's interesting. We have to go back a long ways. Um, I probably started around age 10, but um, I didn't have any instruction or direction. And as soon as I started painting mountains, it didn't look like the mountains, so I gave it up. Uh, but nowadays, um, there's YouTube and Pinterest, and there's just so much out there for for people to get inspired. At 16, I learned how to sew with a private sewing teacher. And it wasn't until I was in college that I realized how much I enjoyed art. So I took every kind of art class. I took a metal class and I, I made a tool so I can sculpt a big log and ceramics and drawing and watercolor and oil painting. I can't pick my favorite, but I love them all. It sounds like you have done a lot to become the artist you are today. Where do you find your inspiration? My inspiration is mostly through nature. Even though I may not draw the ocean or the, the woods or the mountains, I get a lot from being in that environment. I'm fortunate to live across the street from the Pacific Ocean and about 10 minutes from the magnificent redwood forest that has old growth. I'm also inspired by previous teachers uh, I've taken workshops with, especially my silk painting teacher, Suzanne Punch, to the Mendocino Art Center. Uh, what I like about my workshop teachers is somehow I seem to pick out the teachers that give you permission to make mistakes. So anyway, um, that, that helps a lot in my creativity. It's amazing where we can pull inspiration from. 
Mm -hmm. What is the most memorable piece you have ever done? Well, 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 let's see. Well, there's a couple of things. One that comes to mind is when I was in Italy a few years back on the Amalfi Coast at the ocean. And you know, they have sea glass and shells that come from the ocean. Well, this time they had tossed tile from people's homes that were washed up on the shore. And I, I was in heaven. I just, I just loved it. I felt like I was a kid in a treasure box. So I took all that home and I made a mirror out of it. Um, another thing that comes to mind is uh, when I attended a women's group, we, uh, we made an altar cloth. And so we took our hand tracings from each person. And then as a group, we painted the cloth. So when we met as a group, we put a candle on it and we sat around in silence and there was a feeling of warmth and trust in the group. That sounds beautiful. I wish I could see that. Yeah. Do you have any artists that you look up to? Well, um, yes. I, I did take a lot of classes in college, all the studio art classes. The only thing I didn't take was art history. So it was in my adult life when I was traveling that I came across some artists that I fell in love with. Uh, one was, um, uh, what's her name? Oh yeah, uh, Giorgio O'Keefe, the one that makes the beautiful flowers. Uh, in Austria was Gustav Plemp. He's my favorite right now. And then Hunderwasser, which is not a very famous artist, but when I got to see the buildings, he, you know, he was also an architect, uh, you know, uh, created, and then also some of his artwork. Um, yeah, definitely inspired. And I also uh, respect a lot of the workshop teachers' um, art that I take. I look at some of those artists work and I can see why they inspire you. Oh, thank you. Thanks, David. What kinds of tools do you use on a regular basis? Well, each art media medium has different tools. Um, so uh, as far as a glass artist, you have certain tools and you'd be surprised that they're not very sharp, but they cut glass. And once the glass is cut, you put them into a kiln, which melts the glass together. When I do silk painting, I want to get some really expensive brushes because they're so they just flow they they soak up the dye and when you use it it just slides on the silk and then there is this uh equipment that we ended up making because when i make scarves you have to make them permanent so they don't bleed when you go outside in the rain and so i have a six foot cylinder that has bubbling water on the bottom and it steams for four hours. That's interesting. I am sure you use all kind of stuff I have never seen before. I, I bet you're right. I read that you once asked children to draw loneliness. Can you tell me about that? Oh, that was, that was, oh my God, I think it was almost 50 years ago. <laughs> anyway, um, during a religious school project, we wanted to do a film as a senior project on loneliness. And so we came up with ideas on what we thought loneliness is or was, and we followed a 
an actress who pretended she was a widow at a gravesite walking to the her beloved's grave and um and we went to convalescent homes and saw people just sitting staring out into space making the assumption we thought they were lonely we don't know if they were but that is what our thoughts were and then i went to the religious school class and in the younger grades i had the kids draw what they thought loneliness was and they didn't even get crayons they just had a pencil and paper and they just went right to it and i was so surprised to see what they created they created uh what they thought loneliness was like the, you know a group of kids playing together and they drew themselves apart um or let's see um maybe oh i know with one there was they drew their family on the front page and then they put themselves on the back page and i thought oh my I, I mean, I didn't ask them about it. I now know, now that I know what art therapy is, I didn't know at that time, but my major at Sonoma State College was in art therapy, and I could have followed up on questions for those kids, but it was so powerful to me that I, I just kept them. That was great start to our conversation, but you will have to come back next Saturday to help the rest of Wendy's interview. In the meantime, do me and Solid and go subscribe to my channel and please like and comment. Subscribe below, you know you want to. What the heck is that? Oh wonders of the world So many wonders to behold So many questions in my mind So many questions, so little time Answers so so easily come Unless you know to ask someone Who is a master of the trade Ask them how clouds get their shape. Welcome to What the Heck Is That with David Shiventura.